So we can copy the, the copy the FS tab file, but we need to make a change obviously because we're on a different partition. So the current BLFS LFS 9.1 BLFS 9.1 is on partition STA 9 and the new one we're building is on STA 10 if you recall from earlier on. So I'll copy it and then I'll go into the true environment and edit it with my newly built Vi. So the bit that must be changed is this bit here. So CL, I'll change it to a 10. I'll just check the others. The swap I'm going to reuse, as I said before, can we use that? The boot I'm going to reuse, so that can stay the same. Just double check these virtual file systems. There should be no changes again. Just quickly eyeball them, make sure everything's the same. And yes, that's fine. So there's two extra lines here which you need to keep in. The first one is this line here to, to mount the EFI partition. And the last one is this line here which mounts the um, EFI vars. So apart from that, I'll just keep that as it is. And we move on to, well, the final package, I guess, which is the kernel. So let's extract the kernel. So the first thing we've got to do is make MR proper. Now, um, can do the usual thing and create a default configuration file and use that, but why not use the existing configuration file? If we look at the boot, which we've got access to here, let's see if we can mount the boot. Yep. You'll see we've got a copy of the config file. Um, and in fact, it will be the latest one from BLFS because I was taking backup. So it's not the original LFS one, but we can use that. And then we can run, I think it mentions here, there's an option to make where we can run old config to upgrade that version of the kernel config file to the newer version we're using 5.83. So what I'll do is do cp, we've done make mr proper which cleans everything. So now we do cp forward slash boot forward slash config. That's the config file and we want to call it the dot config file which is what the kernel uses, the hidden file. Next we do make old config. And what that'll do, it'll go through and just ask us any questions about uh, any options that have been updated. So I'll just accept the defaults. Um, generally, accept the defaults. You might want to refuse any new hardware um, or even things like that. Use a space snapshot device. Well, I'll leave that in, I suppose. But if there's hardware you know you haven't got, you can um, say no to it. So just read these and see if it's anything appropriate that needs to be changed. Otherwise, just accept the defaults. If you're unsure, it's probably best to accept the defaults anyway. So there's quite a few changes because there's quite a few versions. Difference between the two kernels.
So V host drivers. I don't know what that is. It doesn't sound like something I need. So I'm just going to do no to that. And that's done. So there's quite a few changes there, but it's complete. What I'll do next is to run the make menu command as it suggests, make menu config. So we can inspect some of these options here. Now these should be in here from LFS 9.1, but we'll check them anyway. So the first one, uh, device drivers, generic driver options. So that should be empty, which it is and that should be build set which it is so that's okay and the other one is for the AFI stub support under processors which we need because we're booting with the AFI and there it is so it's, it is actually set so that's fine one other thing I need to check is for firmware so this is under if I go back again under device drivers from the top menu generic driver options uh, firmware loader and you can see I've got um, the kernels referring to a bit of firmware so what I need to do is to copy that firmware from the current system into the new system so I'll just go to my other tab here I do ls cell slash lib firmware you'll see there's other stuff in there that's been installed by you know other packages we've, we've built the only one I'm interested in if I go back here is the one in the i915 directory and this kbl dmc ver1 underscore 04 so hopefully that's all that's in there it is so what I need to do is cp minus avx forward slash lib slash firmware i915 and I'll copy that into LFS forward slash lib forward slash firmware and you'll see the firm I'm tabbing at the moment there's nothing in the firmware at the moment I'll press enter now if I do um, ls minus l in LFS forward slash lib firmware you can see there's that directory and there's that file so that that bit of firmware will get built into the kernel in the new system which is what I want so we're in a position to run the make command now to build the kernel so there's no changes there made in the menu config so we'll just do make I'll do, no, I don't need to do minus J4 because we've got the make flag set. And just wait a few minutes for that to finish building.
Okay, so that's built. We can now install the modules. Now it looks like we should have mounted the boot um, or bound it. So what I'm going to do is to unmount it from here. Oops. And use this bind command that they've recommended. Uh, oh, in the host system, of course. So we should still have access to the boot within the troot. There it is, that's fine. And what we do now is we copy the kernel into the boot. So this is not going to overwrite anything because it's got a version number on it. It's going to be augmenting what's already there. Or rather in addition to. So if we just look at the boot again, you'll see we've now got two sets of system app config and kernels with the newer version for LFS 10.0. Now we install some documentation and uh, right, we should run this chown minus r zero zero on the Linux directory just to make sure everything's owned by root as it says for um, security reasons really so let's do that now couple of other warnings there um, some information there about if you need to load modules. Now we move on to setting up Grub to make this boat. So you can create a rescue disk there. I never bother with this because it's easy enough just to load a, a, a live CD. Although I have to say this is probably uh, a better option if you want something loading quickly. Now, uh, as I said before, because I've already got Grub installed, I'm not going to run this command and overwrite the existing one. It works perfectly well. Obviously, running that risks trashing something. Um, I haven't built it with the EFI option anyway, as it says here. Um, I'm not going to copy and paste this in because it'll overwrite my existing Grub config, and that's not what I want because I've got lots of other menu options in there. Instead, what I'm going to do is to edit it in Vite and just add another menu option for this Linux from scratch 10. So, uh, vi forward slash boot grub uh, grub dot dot cfg. So here you can see the existing one. What I'm going to do, because the default is set to zero, which is the first entry, I'm going to make the new LFS the default by inserting it at the top. If you wanted to continue having, for example, this uh, booting, then you could either do what I'm doing and put it in position two, but you'd have to change this to one, or just insert the new BLFS down here or somewhere else. But I'm going to, as I say, add it in as the first entry. So it'll be the default one that loads. And to start with, what I'll do is just copy and paste this. And then change it. In fact, what might be easier is if I copy and paste it from here. And then modify this one. So I've got GNU Linux will be what appears 5.83 LFS 10. I need to do an insmod X2 as I've done in the other one to load the correct driver for the uh, file system. I then also need to set the root equals HD1 
come with GPT-7. So this is the partition that has got the um, the kernel on. So this won't change because the boot partition is on partition 7. So that doesn't need to be changed. The next line does need to be changed. I need to remove the boot part because the kernel is going to be on the root of this partition. And I need to change the root designation here. It needs to be a 10. And I think that should be it. Uh, just check that again. So I've changed the. I've put the Unis mod in. I've set the root to HD1 GPT7, which it is at the moment. I've changed this to SDA10 and I've removed the boot. So it looks basically the same as the previous one. It's the only difference really is the name the name of the kernel file and the boot partition so that should be it and I'll retain all the functionality of the other options as well so I'll just save and exit that as the warning says here don't run grub make config because it will just overwrite that file 